Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can create three different simple graphs in Word. So the first one would be a bar graph. So go to insert, go to table, click on the drop down and this is where you'll select and customize however many cells you need to create your table. So for example I'm going to select 10 by 10. If you need to select more just go to insert, go to tables and click insert table and then you can use these input boxes to select how much you need. Now you may want your graph to stretch the width of the page but if not you can simply go up to the rulers at the top. If you can't see rulers go to view and make sure that rulers are checked and then click at the top here and move this over. You can see it will only move so far. Then go to table layout and then select distribute columns and then pull distribute columns and it will gradually move the table over to however big or small or wide you want your graph. So just keep doing that until you're happy and then select your table by this top left square and you'll notice in width you're in the table layout tab in width it says 1.08. Well in order to make these some nice squares we need to match the height. So just type 1.08 and press enter and now we have some nice squares to form our graph. So I'm going to take all these grid lines out by selecting the table and then going to table design, going to borders, clicking on the drop down, selecting no borders and then clicking on the drop down and selecting grid lines. Now this is just a guide, it won't be printed or saved, it's just the grid lines for the graph. But what I will do is I'm going to select this area here which will be the outline of our graph. I'll go then back up to borders, I'm going to select the left border and I'm going to select the bottom border. So you can see this is the basis of our graph. Now what you will want to do is to put in your values which will point to these, correlate with these lines here. But at the moment if I put in any kind of number then it won't correlate really with anything. So what I need to do is I need to split these cells up. So I'm going to select this top cell, go to table layout, go to split cells and then number of columns I want one, number of rows two. Do the same with all of them, I'll just speed up the video. Okay, so in order to get my number to correlate with this line, I now need to select these two cells and click merge, these two cells and click merge. So when I put my value in, let's say I'm going to put six at the top here, then go over to this icon here, which is a line to center, you can see it will now correlate with this line perfectly. You can even move over to the right if you want to, completely up to you. And I'll go ahead and just merge all these together. Then we can put in our numbers, so I'm just going to start from zero, then select them all and go to center right. And then you can see we've got this little bit of black borderline coming at the bottom here. So in order to get rid of that, let's select this row here, then go to split. This time I want just the nine columns and I want two rows and press enter. Don't worry about the borderlines, we can get rid of all of these. So let's go to table design, select no borders and just select this row here and again select bottom border. Now along the bottom because we're doing a bar graph then actually the numbers will correlate to this line or this set of cells above so I can just enter in my values at the bottom here and then we can just select all of these and go to table layout and select center and now in order to put your graph together we can just select the height of the bar that you want we can go to merge cells, then we can go to table design, go to borders and just select outside borders. And there you can see is your first bar. Then you can go ahead and select the rest, layout, merge cells, table design, borders, or you can just go ahead and just merge all your cells first. Then you can just click in each cell go to design and just click borders. It's already selected so just click on that outside border 
And if you're interested in shading, select the bar that you want, go up to shading and you can select from any of these colours, let's pick a grey. You can alternate the colours if you want to, to a darker grey, but in that instance I would just select each one that you want the darker colour first and then select the ones you want the lighter colour one because it's already selected here and it's just easier. And then let's just switch off those grid lines and there you can see your bar chart. I know it's a very simple chart but this is the whole point of this video when you just want to do something simple. What it also allows you to do by clicking in this square here is you can actually move the table around your document. The second one we're going to do, we can actually do two different graphs. Let's go ahead and formulate the table again. I'm going to speed up the video because I have shown you this once already. Okay, so if we wanted to go for a line graph, go to insert, go to shapes and click on the line and then just click and draw out your first line. Now if you can see it's a little bit clunky and it does jump. If you want to smooth the action down just press your alt or option key and it will smooth that down. And if that line is the wrong colour or size just select it. Go to shape format, go to this icon here, go to weight and we can just change the weight and we can also click on there and change the colour. Now the easiest way to select another line is to press Command or Control C, deselect it, Command or Control V. Then once again click and join that up using that Alt key to just smooth the action down. And do that to the same. Deselect, Command or Control V again. Perfect. Now if you wanted to add some extras in here, like some little balls at the end like I have seen online, then what you can do is go to insert. If some of this is greyed out, it's because your cursor is somewhere in the table and you can tell because this little cross at the top left will appear. Deselect it and select anywhere else on your page and you'll see that they become live again. Go to shapes, click on the circle, click hold your shift key down to click a perfect circle and then we can change the outline. I'm going to select no outline because it does come with a, an outline and I'm going to change it to black. Now I would always recommend that you zoom in when using these small circles because they're really fiddly and they don't always allow you to select them very well and they do jump around. So I'm going to select one and put it up here and then I'm going to hold down my alt or option key. This is another way to copy and paste and put it here. Now I do think that these little circles are too big but I'm going to show you how to reduce the size of them when I've finished selecting them all, putting them all in. So once I've done that I'm going to hold down my command or control key and I'm going to select just all of the circles and then over here I'm going to make sure I check this box which will mean they will stay perfect circles and they're now 0.31. I'm going to change them to 0.21 and press enter and you can see now they all shrink in size. It does mean that you might have to move one or two of them because they do then move out of position. Do be careful because there you go I've just duplicated one because I'm using that alt key. Make sure that the cross is there when you move them because if it's not you will stretch them to an oval. Perfect. So we just move out slightly or zoom out and we'll just go to table le uh, table design and then we'll just switch off the grid lines. You can see this is your perfect line graph. So if you wanted to turn this into a scatter graph or you wanted to make a scatter graph then you can use the circles to do that but I know in some tables you like to use crosses. So you know how the circles work and obviously they can be spaced out wherever you like. If you want to create the crosses though Go to insert, go to text box, draw text box, just click and draw it a text box and then just put a capital X in there. You can make that X bigger or smaller by selecting it. Go to home and you can use these two here. This one on the left will make it bigger, this one on the right will make it smaller. So just reduce the size of that box. If I deselect it you can see it's got a black border but it's also 
got a white background. So to get rid of those, you need to select it, go to Shape Format, click on the drop down of the outline and select No Outline, go to Shape Fill and select No Fill. And then once again, you can move this wherever you want. And then once it's selected, hold down that Alt or Option key, click and drag, and you can just duplicate these crosses and just pop them anywhere you need to in your scatter graph. And once again, we'll just go up, select the table. So just click anywhere in the table, go to table design, and then just switch off those grid lines. And once again, you'll have that scatter graph. You can keep the grid lines on if you want to, or if you just want to put grid lines in this section here, you can go up and change the border. So let's say you just wanted it to look like fake guidelines. You can select this one or this one. Then you can go to borders and just select inside borders, deselect, and then you've got this graph that will actually show those lines inside that can make it a little bit easier to read. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.